Hey guys, welcome back to Gundam Builders. This is the third episode. Thank you for your comments and constructive criticism. I will try my best not to go um uh, every five minutes like last week. I really apologize for that. So this week we're gonna do a blast from the past. We're gonna be doing we're gonna be talking about Gundams from 20 years ago versus Gundams of today. We're gonna show you how how they change the detailing and everything from the internal from the internal to out uh, external. As you see, I already started setting up some for for this week, so we can explain to you what's going on and the difference between the detailing. Uh, these are some of my Gundams that I've made like literally 20 years ago, like 1996, 1997, when they when I first got into them. It was amazing. Uh, I apologize for my partner not being here. He will be here shortly, but we'll get to that sooner or later. I'm showing you right now the different levels of each Gundam. So you have the 144, like regular, and then we have the real grades. This is the HG, which they're really detailed and they're more fun. Like we were talking about like last week where the RGs, um, they have the skeleton inside them and they take away from the creativity. These, you can actually build them and put them together yourself and be a little bit more inventive and you can actually customize a little better. These are the 100 scales. This is the master grade 100 scale, which is extremely detailed, extremely beautifully put together. Um, it's way prettier to work with, and when you customize them, it just looks a lot hot. Like I explained, like I was showing you with the Exia, and my boy's Gundam from last week, where he was showing you his Gundam. We really worked hard on these. Then the last one, which is the Big Daddy one, is the 1160. These are actually like really big, ultra detailed. If you really put your heart and soul into it, the work will be phenomenal. And it's one of those pieces that you you work, and when you finish them, you feel completed. I would actually love to do a, like the Grandpa one, the, the original Gundam, the, with this one. I'm actually looking into buying the the 148 one, which is actually a really huge one. It's almost the size of like a two-year-old child. That's actually going to be really fun. And I'm actually going to make a whole shrine dedicated to him and the LEDs in it. I have to. So with that said and done, we're going to start talking about the different sizes. As you see, this is a 144. This is a 100. And as you go up higher, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're going to go into the blast from the past, and we're going to start talking about them. Coming up now. So now that we're back, I'm going to talk about like how it was like 20 years ago. Uh, this was actually my first Gundam that I ever built. Really choppy, very simplistic. It was the 144 model Polyconic board. Uh, it was actually the RX 178 uh, Gundam Mach 2. When I first time I saw this, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. Da -da 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 -da. Nothing compared to the new Gundams now. Like really OD detailed now. This was actually the HG, the high grade one from back in the days. And as you, the colors are very bland and very like not so vibrant like the way they are now. Um, this is actually more of a modern kit. I've actually tried to keep it to the colors, even though, even though I painted them. This is actually to the colors. So, as you see the difference, very bland, very dull, versus vibrant, and it's it shows in the detail, it shows in the weapons, even the back, like the boosters in the back, it's absolutely different. There's actually details, and now you can actually buy pieces that you can actually have um, metal pieces in the back, and it looks, when you're doing a, customs, a custom Gundam, it makes it all the more, the more worthwhile. Uh, we, the store that we're in, the, the Ryu Young Hobby Shop on Fifth Avenue, they have pieces and they order pieces. They actually have the the Unicorn LED custom kit. Again, folks, if you need anything, by all means, come to the store. It's it's a wonderland like I spent last week. So, as you see the difference, very, very, very basic, even down to the feet. The joints are worn out these these are not like the way that they used to be um very like the 
weapons were, were a lot heavier and just pieces of plastic. And it's still plastic, but now it's like we got way more detail. We got detail inside of detail now. Here's a little fun fun kit that I did for the tournament about a couple of months ago. I actually made if you really want to customize, customize yourself to the fullest. Go above and beyond and make something that's yours. I'm a big Transformer fan, G1 all the way. So what I did was, I said, fuck it, I haven't seen this before. I'm going to make Gundam into Transformers and Transformers into Gundam. And I picked three Gundam series. I have uh, Savior, Air Master, Cryos. And three different series. So you have the Destiny Seed, Gundam X, and Gundam Double Zero. And as you see, I customized all the colors. I actually kind of primer them. Part of them are these twice, especially this one, because his colors are orange and, and white. So the orange kept coming out. When you I actually won the tournament, which is pretty badass. So with but when you see the detail, you actually put again, you put your heart and soul into it, it shows. And it shows like that you want to do this. You you actually have the drive to do this. I'm actually trying to work more now into diagram diorama and more background than this one. So that's one. As we go over to this side, this was a this one I did in nineteen ninety seven, ninety eight, when the Wing Zero came when Endless Walls first came out. And if you've never seen the OVA, this is that was so beautiful with the wings, the wing zero. But my all-time favorite is the Hell Custom. Please don't laugh at the box. It's been in an attic for a couple of years. But this is actually how the pieces were. And as you see, like the detail compared to now, it's not the same. This is the new one. This is actually the updated model which I'm on the process of actually creating. I'm going to have so much fun doing this because I'm probably going to customize the colors and make them even darker, like, like a, a matted black or maybe a metallic black to bring out the colors even deeper. This is just going to... If I can find the other ones, I'd be as happy as a big and shit. So I'm going to show you another kit where... This is the 144 model. Again, I, like I told you last week, my favorite series is Gundam X. So, there was the second version to Gundam X was the Divider. Uh, he, what they did was they didn't want him to take too long to charge because he was charging. It took too long for him to charge in the episode and it was a defensive flaw. So, what they did was they made his, his suit, they changed it and they gave him a harmonica shield. The shield itself actually opened into a five beam cannon and gave him proportion like, like a sail. I'm actually going to open this one up and show you how the pieces looked from back then. Like you can actually put LEDs because there was no detail on the inside of the chest. It was very open, very gappy. You couldn't put the pilot in back in the days because they, they were like this big. So they just wanted you to have the pilot next to them. Now, with these, the pilots are like this small. You, the detail in the chest is so, so deep. So, I'm sorry, I'm nerdgasming a little bit. So just give me a second. But it's like it's really it shows that like how much we've progressed over the years, especially over 20 years. Um, so now. Now I'm gonna actually have you, I'm gonna open up this one because I took him apart. I put him together like many moons ago and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what he looks like in pieces. So this is what I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the difference between the old kids versus the new kids. Like back in the days, we didn't really have that much detail um, on how to make the Gundam. It was just very straightforward. There was, when you open this up, it's all open. It's, it's, it's a giant gap. There's nothing in the middle. Um, as you see, I was actually thinking about putting an LED. That's why I cracked her open. I'm eventually going to put back the, the divider. 
in one day, but I'm actually thinking about putting more LEDs and putting and repainting her. I'm, but just to show you an idea on how the footing works, and as you see, like when I first did this, I didn't do the perfect gunpla things now, where everybody's like all fancy and sandpapering and everything. So you still see all my mistakes. You still see the gaps, like the streamlines and everything. So that's that's another flaw that I'm actually looking into fixing. But again, all these pieces, 20 years old, still looks nice, but they can look nicer. And with the new pieces, as you see, like with the new pieces, everything is more very fine detailed, very like highly detailed. Even shields open up. So with all this done, with all this said and done, you know, the new the new gen, which I'm glad to be a part of still, it's it's a great time to be alive and actually still be a part of Gundam. And I'm kinda glad to, to the right to the to this hobby shop because I I was actually looking for a place to relax. But without drinking so this is where definitely where i wanted to be i actually found a new nick niche in life and like started messing around and went back into the hobby and, and it's good to be working with the hands and, and pain and like my co-workers laugh because i have like blue paint across my fingers and they're thinking i'm nail polishing or something but it's just like i get into the paint jobs and everything it's one of those things that you really again you have to be you have to be passionate with it and if you're not, not that you're not good, there's always ways to be better. And like I've always explained this so far two weeks in a row, we're here to educate. We're not here to criticize, we're not here to judgment, we're here to educate. And that's what that's what I'm trying to show you today. Uh, I apologize, once again, I, I just want to apologize that it looked like shit. It's really hot today. The AC is not working. I'm not up to par. My partner is not here today, unfortunately. Hopefully next week he'll be here. Uh, he got stuck at work. It's called responsibilities, people. So as my camera cameraman pans pans around the, the Gundam, you're gonna see the stickers back in the days were not the best. They were actually very cheap, very joppy. Uh, so sad that the original Transformers stickers were better than this. Uh, uh, as I said, the new stickers now, now we have water decals, so we can actually be more detailed and actually make it look like it's part of the anime, more than it's just another Gundam figure. So, this was a, one, a winner from a couple of months ago in the, in the Rio Hobby Shop. As you, tell, as, I, as you can tell, it doesn't matter what size. It could be 144, 140, 148. As long as you put your heart and soul into it, you're definitely going to see uh, wonderful things. This is a 144 model, and the detail that this kid put into it, he even designed the stand differently so that it, it looks like a, like a generator pushing him up. This is, every time I come to the store, I always look at this and just amazed and stupefied on the detail that this kid put into this. I don't know his name, but God bless him, though, because... He did one hell of a job on, on this piece, and it's just, it looks dirty, but it's not. It's actually, that's actually the paint job, and he actually has water decals and regular stickers on here. And hand, I just realized it's hand-painted, people. This is, again, a sick, sick piece, and one of the ones, one of the reasons why I come here, because I want to learn more. I want to see what's out there. Eventually, I would like to interview more people uh, who do detailing like these on um, YouTube channel and other YouTubers uh, and actually conversate and put our thoughts together and what, what we can do and how can we be better. So once again, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about the Gunpla tournament every month. This is my entry. 
Um, again, this is uh, Versigo from Gundam X. This is the Unicorn. This is PG Unicorn. This is the entries for this month. There's only two entries. Please make your your votes and let us know how you like. Let us know how you like the Gundams. The votes happen every every month. You can actually do online or you can come in person. Kevin will definitely have happy to take your votes and let you know eventually let you know which one will win. So unfortunately my partner Chris couldn't make it today. He will be with us next week. And we're gonna continue talking about Gundams and new things that we can put into the store. New cars, new remote control cars, new because it's the summertime, so we're pro Kevin's probably gonna have some new toys for us next week and coming around in the upcoming bleh, upcoming months. I'm not gonna edit that out, folks. That's that's me. That's how I talk. The bleh, bleh. So thank you for thank you for coming and seeing our show. Uh, on a personal note, I'm gonna talk about something that's gonna be a little not a, not Gundam. Not a Gundam issue. Um, the other day, one of my all-time favorite artists decided to hang himself. Uh, the lead singer of Soundgarden. When I tell you that man meant a lot to me, like I've seen them in concert at least five times. I saw him in concert three times with Soundgarden, two times with uh, with um, Audio Slave. The words that he put into the songs defined my generation, uh, helped me through the adolescence when I needed something, and the only escape I had was music. I wish he knew how much he meant to a lot of people, and how much his words hit home, especially with me. There's so much I would have liked to have told him, and so much I would have liked to have said, but you can't honor your heroes after they're dead. One of my all-time favorite songs, and I know it's kind of cliche, is always going to be Black Hole Sun. Especially for this one line where everything goes quiet, and he's, his voice just rings out. And he just hear him say, hang my head, drown my fears, until you all just disappear. Black hole sun, won't you come? Won't you come? I've rolled, I was like a stone. I lived the real 4th of July. I think there, there should have been a better way for him to go than that way. But my condolences to his family, to his friends, his, to all his fans. And I don't think my co my co host would mind me closing out with Black Hole Sun today. Thank you, Chris Cornell. Hope you find that peace that you're looking for. We miss you. Thank you.